Uh, thermal analogies are nothing else than the clever way the engineers, again, that's another trick, it's other very related to the way of treating problems by engineers, to solve problems involved involving temperatures, just using the tools that we have available for the case of <coughs> non-thermal problems. So that's it. So solve thermal problems as if they were non-thermal problems. That's what the knowledge is. And this is very clever, you will see. And this comes from the old times of uh, uh, engineering or com continuum mechanics. So it's based that we'll, we'll look for two uh, analogies. The first thermal analogy, also called the Wamel-Newman analogy, and the second thermal analogy. And then we'll provide you two alternative ways of solving problems with thermal, uh, with in temperatures involved. So you have to choose, for every case, what is the most convenient. And that will link also with some procedures that you maybe have al already dealt with in your um, courses on structural analysis. So let's start with the thermal analogy. So that's the problem. The problem in which we have the equilibrium equation, the Cauchy's equation, now we deal with a uh, uh, um, quasi-static problem, so we don't consider any, any temperatures in there, any acceleration in there. This is a constitutive equation. You see here, it stands for the non-thermal part, and this is what we add with respect to what we were used to. This term here, the thermal stresses, and the uh, geometric equation relating strains with displacements, which is the usual one, and the boundary conditions on gamma u, where we have prescribed displacements, and gamma sigma, where we have prescribed tractions. So that's the problem. And now we are going to modify that problem so that it looks like if no temperature was involved. And that is what we are going to do. For instance, this is the original problem. We have actions. Actions, what are the actions? The body forces, the tractions, the displacements, the prescribed displacements, and the temperatures. And what are the responses? The displacement, the strains, and the stresses. Okay? We assume also that the increment of temperature is known. So that's why we can uncouple the, the 18 equations that were initially involved and just reduce them to the problem I've just uh, shown. Okay, so now let's, let's do some operations, some manipulation of the equations. For instance, we know that the stresses can be split into the non-thermal stresses minus the thermal stresses, which have this form, you know, here. So whenever you have to take the divergence of the stresses, since this is a linear operator, the divergence of the sum or the divergence of the difference is the difference of the divergences. So we just take the divergence of this part minus the divergence of this part. And the divergence of this part turns out to be the gradient, so after some trivial operations, the gradient of this scalar, B beta, the thermal coefficients, times increment of theta. So now looking at the equilibrium equations, which originally looked like that, we just introduce this, this term, which is here, and this term, but we introduce this term in a manipulation, in a clever manipulation, we introduce this term into the body forces term. By multiplying by those zero and dividing by those zero, you see that this term is that term that should initially appear here, but now we just introduce it at here. And we construct something that we can call the fictitious, fictitious body forces. So the problem, the, the, the equilibrium equations can now be rephrased just in terms of non-thermal non stresses and a pseudo body forces, which are the original one, corrected by this term. Look, we know that. That's not an unknown. So these body forces are still known, are data in the problem, because we know what is that coefficient, and we assume to know the temperature change at every point. So that's the first manipulation in the momentum equation. Then in the boundary equations, again, we have a boundary equation which is like that. And now considering the split of the stresses into non-thermal part and the thermal part, we replace into here. We have that. And now we pass this term to the other side. So finally, we can write this term, sigma non-thermal stresses times the normal, equal 
the original prescribed tractions plus the result, which the uh, thermal tractions, beta, delta, theta times one, times the normal, this is one times the normal, is the normal itself, so finally it looks like that. We just construct a pseudo boundary forces, tra boundary tractions, t hat star, which we know, which are the original ones, corrected by beta delta t times n. That is a pseudo tractions that we add at every point and we construct these pseudo boundary forces. So now the boundary conditions can be rephrased in that way. So we introduce that into the problem and now we have a look uh, into, the, into the equations and we see that it does look like that in terms of the non-thermal stresses and this corrected but known uh, pseudo boundary for, uh, body forces. The constitutive equation can be expressed just in terms of non-thermal stresses. So the one that we had in elastic problems, now there is no increment of charge general here. And the geometric equation is not modified. And in terms of the displacements, the displacements are imposed to be the same as they were. And now the boundary conditions is placed in terms of the, is set in terms of the non-thermal stresses. So now this is, a, this is the same original problem, but rephrased. We have rephrased it in such a way that everything involving temperature is in these body forces and in these pseudo tractions. And now the stresses acting in the problem are always the non-thermal part of the stresses. So this is like a non-thermal problem. This looks like a non-thermal problem with those corrections in terms of the body forces and in terms of the standard tractions. Of the standard tractions. Look, that's the way that engineers decided that now if I have a machine, by machine I understand the formulas that we have for solving problems with no temperature, there is no temperature here. No temperature in the here excepting in the definitions of the corrected body forces and tractions. So now we have another problem that we call the analogous problem. Is that corrected problem in which we have as actions now the pseudo body forces, the corrected body forces, the corrected tractions, and the original uh, prescription in terms of displacements. The mathematical problem, the, the mathematical model is the same that we have for non thermal problems. And now we obtain responses. What are the responses that we obtain? Well, if we solve this problem, as we do in non thermal problems, we obtain the original displacements because this problem was formulated in terms of the original displacements, the original strains because this problem was formulated in terms of the original strains, but in terms of the stresses we obtain the non-thermal stresses. Okay? So by solving this analogous non-thermal problem, then we obtain the original displacements, the original strains, and the non-thermal part of the stresses. Okay? So that's what we have from the original problem. We just correct, we just remove the strains. So it's, a, it's a, an elastic problem, not thermoelastic. We correct the body forces, the body forces. And we correct the tractions by adding this term. And then we solve the problem as we usually did using non-thermal problems. And we obtain the solution of this analogous elastic problem <coughs> to the original problem was named one. That now we name that two. So look, what you have done is creating a problem one, or starting from the problem one, creating a problem two, which is not exactly the same. There are some corrections. So in terms of the actions, the problem one is that, and the problem two is that. So the difference of A1 and A2 in terms of actions is that minus that, and this is the correction, the correction you have introduced, in the body forces. This minus that is zero. This minus that is the correction. The correction is minus beta theta delta theta times n, the pseudo tractions that we have had. And then in terms of temperature, of course, this problem has a temperature. The first one had temperature. That one has non temperature. So the difference is that. And that is what we call prob uh, actions three. So A1 minus A2 is what we call A3. And in terms of the responses, what do we have? Well, the original problem, we had as unknowns the 
original displacements, the original strains, the original stresses. Now, in the corrected problem, we have the original displacements, the original strains, and the non-thermal part of the stresses. So the difference is 0, 0, and the difference of that minus that is precisely the thermal stresses. And this is what we call the response tree. So now we have created a difference of A1 and A2, A3, and difference of R1 and R2, R3. And now we check those actions and that solutions in the original thermoelastic problem, and we see that effectively we did very well in, co in considering this action and this response because this is the response, because fulfills the, the problem of the anthermo a thermo elastic problem subjected to these specific actions. That is what we call a trivial, pro a trivial problem. It's a thermoelastic problem, but of which we know the response, because the thermoelastic problem with no displacements, no strains, and just stresses, which are the thermal stresses. And in fact, this, by replacing these actions, these responses, and these actions into the original set of equations, the thermoelastic problem, the original set of equations you had here, they are fulfilled. So since the solution is unique, that would be the solution. So finally, look, we have arti artificially created uh, the composed, according to that, the actions one, passing that to the other side, as the sum of actions two and action three, and the responses one, passing that to the other side, as the sum of the reactions two, responses two, and responses three. So that's what we have here. That is the summary of the first analogy. Look, and that's the basis for solving problems based on the first analogy. We had an original <laughs> thermoelastic problem involving temperature. So to speak, we didn't have a machinery to solve this problem because the machinery that we had, the, the Navier equations and so on, was developed for non-thermal problems. So we don't have machinery for solving that. And now, we clever guys, what to do? Then we decompose that into the sum of two problems. One is a problem that is trivial, trivial in the sense that it's thermoelastic too, but we know the solution. It's a problem where we have, I mean, some uh, body forces, B tilde, some tractions, B delta, B delta delta times n, no prescribed tractions at the boundary, increment temperature involved, but we know the solution. That is a problem where everything is confined, so to speak, so we don't have any, any displacements, any strains, and the stresses are precisely the thermal stresses. So we know that. And in between what do we have? A problem with zero temperature, which is the original problem with some corrected body actions, body forces, which are the original one minus this term, and some corrected tractions at all points of the uh, gamma sigma boundary, we just replace the original tractions by the original plus some tractions that depend on increment of temperature. And this is a problem that in the, in, the, in the format can be solved by the machinery that we have available for the uh, non-thermal problems, so by the, typically by the Navier equations. So that's the problem that we'll solve. So what we will do is that we'll solve this problem by using these correct actions in terms of body forces and tractions. We'll obtain the solution. And what do we know? That the final solution we are looking for are, is, in terms of displacements, the one we have found, because these are zero. The, in terms of the strains, the one we have found, because these are zero. And in terms of the stresses, we have to add to these stresses these stresses, which are, by the way, the thermal stresses, and then we'll obtain the original stresses. So the only thing we have to do is compute that problem and correct the stresses and add this term that we know, and we have the solution. Okay? <coughs>